good family we back at it with another video we're gonna be reacting to when flexing goes completely wrong if you have large amounts of wealth everybody don't need to know just that simple but hey if you willing to deal with that that's up to you let's see what's going on what exactly can happen when people try to show and tell just a little too much? Well, let's get right to it and start with number five, running for the status. Before she was arrested for credit card fraud, Ariel Foster was a track star at LaSalle University in Boston. She had a bright future there as a student athlete until the arrest. Foster ran for the track team while studying at LaSalle on a scholarship. At the time, she was a freshman with very little money. So, to help pay for some of her living expenses, Foster got a job at Burlington Mall in their jewelry store called La Vista. One day, during an interview the local newspaper reporting on her athletic performance, Foster bragged to the reporter that she was buying herself a $35,000 Tesla scam. After buying a car, Foster posted a photo of the red car on social media. She posted the photo in February, along with several other posts of fancy things she bought. These items included a $5,000 Louis Vuitton purse, $6,000 worth of Delta Airlines tickets, which brought her to Madden Hawaii, where she spent an additional $50,000 for the hotel there. The part that busted Foster the most was the caption of her Tesla. She wrote that the Tesla was her biggest flex because she paid for it with cash money instead of taking out a car loan. Oh my god, woman. You draw that much attention to you. Police well, we started looking into Foster's bank statements after the jewelry store of Visa reported a massive theft at their store of over $500,000. Check this out. I'm going to show you how I afforded this car. Okay, you ready? Alright, let's. Her bank statements revealed the exact amount that LaVisa had lost and showed up on her account around the time of the theft. Wow. The investigators arrested Foster in her dorm room, even though the crash star insisted she was innocent. The investigators brought her in and showed her the evidence they had, leading to Foster confessing to the past. Foster admitted to stealing the money and revealed to detectives how she managed to embezzle so much money. In a nutshell, Foster would increase the price of an already expensive item, sell the item to a customer, then siphon the extra money off to herself. She knew it. Foster figured out how to transfer the difference over to a credit card scheme. Foster began this process on February 2nd and stopped on February 27th. The day of the St. Paul police to report a car scheme in some group. Foster claimed that she had stolen the money to help relieve stress, stress that stemmed from the need to provide for her and her family. However, the lack of stress detected in her later and the fact that if the chunk of the money was spent on material things for herself, she had lost of debt on her claim. Foster is facing grand larceny charges, which could very well result in jail time. Number four, PPP Luxuries. Supposed small business owner, Leon Miles, spent his first couple months of the pandemic buying a Bentley and Nestle. The grand total for both cars amounted to $350,000, 250 k for the Bentley, and 100 k for the Cadillac Escalade. They were the latest month. Not long after purchasing the luxurious cars, Miles posted photos of them on his social media pages, mainly on Instagram. Post was all these suspicious. Yo, what is up with y'all posting it on Instagram, yo? Right. Mr. Investigator, who knew that based on government records, Miles had recently received a substantial amount of funds from the PPP, $1.9 million to be exact. We don't need to tell you that the Payment Protection Program is meant to help businesses maintain their payroll while not getting the operating and not for buying a car. Also, similar to the Unemployment Assistance Program, the PPP only requires some access documentation, documentation that can easily be forced by literally anyone with a computer and basic knowledge of how to pay for Miles was one such individual. Miles he lived and worked in Brooklyn, New York, where he owned his very own company called 114 Making. When the government announced the Paycheck Protection Program in 2020, Miles decided to use his business to get ready for his pay. He claimed that 114 Making had 50 employees and an average monthly payroll of $760,838. The program accepted his tax returns and other tax documents and awarded him $1.9 million, enough to hold 114 Making payroll over for at least two months. Miles received the funds in his savings account a short time later after submitting his files. As you already know, Miles spent a good sized chunk of his funds on luxury cars. One might assume that he gave the rest of his 15 points. He did, because Miles didn't have 15 points. He didn't even have 40 or even 10 points. Miles had zero people over 
After investigators saw the Instagram posts, they decided to take a closer look at Miles' tax records. They found that in reality, Miles' company, one month before the make had not filed any tax return for the previous year, 2019. And the business address he listed wasn't a commercial address, but his home. The investigators quickly charged Miles with committing fraud, reporting his tax documents to use taxpayer dollars for his own selfish material gain. In July of 2022, Miles pleaded guilty of making a false statements on a dollar. Despite pleading guilty, Miles still received 72 months behind bars from the judge, partially because of his max sentence for 30 years and because the federal and state governments are trying to make an example of criminals like mine. The government has provided over half a trillion dollars in relief money to the PPP. But unfortunately, some of those funds were obtained through fortunes, costing the government billions. Fortunately, in Miles' case, the government was able to recover some of the money he stole after the war. Number three, Gasco. And that's kind of, that kind of hurt a lot of people that really needed that money. I mean, like, that really had businesses and really needed that money. Young female rapper, a lot of cash destiny, <clears throat> was known for her Instagram posts showing her posing with expensive jewelry and stacks of cash. Her posts feature selfies with diamond chains and real cash in hand, not an uncommon thing for a successful rapper. Do. Desto was successful. She had two big singles, Lunch Food and Vegas, both collaborations with her mentor and chart topping rapper, The Easy Bird. While Memphis rapper earned her money legally, unlike the other people on this list, she unfortunately wasn't able to escape the consequences of posting her material wealth on social media. Desto was in Houston with her young friend, cruising around in her Porsche SUV, when she stopped at a red light at around 2.30 a.m. While at the light, Vox Sedan pulled up next to her. Then, two men jumped out and opened fire on Desto and her friend. One of them, who attacked Desto, Christian Isaiah Lloyd, was found in a nearby parking lot. He was suffering from a wound to the midsection given to him by Desto. Officers who found Williams also found some of Desto's possessions, confirming that it was for a robbery. When the officers and paramedics arrived on the scene, they found Desto. It had already passed by the time they got there. Desto's friend was found with a single wound, but still alive. She was immediately transported to a hospital where she received treatment for her injuries. Police and other security experts have long warned hip-hop artists, along with anyone who collects expensive jewelry, to avoid posting it on social media, especially if you're famous, like Desto. Number two, cooling money. Parents at a primary school in Surrey had been wondering why their kids still didn't have enough supplies, despite funneling hundreds of thousands of pounds into an after-school fund. After all the years spent wondering, the parents had their answer. The school bursary, Debbie Poole, had been siphoning off hundreds of thousands of pounds from the school's accounts. In 2011 and 2018, the school struggled to provide their students with even basic supplies. One parent recalled her child coming home with a bunch of paper cutouts and posters, all separated because they didn't have the glue to stick them to the poster. To help supply the school, parents and administrators put on several different funds. Cake sales, dinners, balls, and prison. Meanwhile, Poole was pulling up to work in fancy cars like her Ford Cougar. While the head teacher drove around in an old Ford Fiesta, Poole had been working for the school for 18 years and hadn't had many problems in that period. In fact, he'd been given promotions throughout her entire career there. The school, known as Kingston Wood Primary School, initially hired Poole as a senior administration officer. Then, they promoted Poole to school business manager in 2011, which gave Poole direct access to the school's finances. The school had around 600 students at the time, meaning that their fundraisers were capable of bringing in substantial amounts of money. As a business manager, Poole would take in cash donated from parents directly. She also allocated funds to the school's bank account. Much of the account was made up of money from Woodis, the school's after-school program that Poole ran as a manager. Poole had the power to do whatever she wished with the cash. She could send the money in the account virtually anywhere. She also had the power to write checks from the school. In other words, Poole had full control over every cent of primary school loan, particularly the fundraiser. Mrs. Poole really enjoyed traffic. Many teachers are fortunate enough to have a couple of months off during the summer, and Poole made sure to make the most of her long vacation time. She and her husband Gary went on several lavish trips to them. They spent their money at a five-star getaway in a rock-sized bungalow with its very own private pool and Greek holiday club. They later returned to Greece to drop 13,000 pounds on a 10-day stay at the exclusive Icos Olivia Resort in Thessaloniki. That same year, in 2018, Gary and David Poole went on a more local trip to the concert, where they spent another 7,000 pounds to stay at a luxury cottage. They also went on Christmas vacations, spending their New Year's in places such as Amsterdam and Venice. Poole was caught thanks to I want to go to Amsterdam too, I really do. The whistleblower said they decided to come forward to expose corrupt and bullying culture at the school. But most of all, they wanted to bring Poole to justice. When investigators eventually sifted through Poole and other administrative offices, they found piles of checkbooks and bank statements. Forty-eight of these statements were still in their envelope, meaning that no one had seen what Poole had been doing, at least on paper, for 48 months. Since 2011, Poole had been transferring money to her accounts and writing herself checks to her. In total, the investigation found that Poole had stolen over 500,000 pounds from the school. And while she spent a good chunk of it on nice cars, the rest was According to her proverbial travel suitcase. For her crimes, Poole is expected to receive a sentence from British courts in three months. Before we get to the last story, if you're enjoying these stories, definitely stay on this video and watch our previous release for more stories about how showing off can go completely wrong. 
Number one. one. I don't have to watch that to know what's going to happen. Employment night. 100 key bank debit cards. That's how many cards a team of young male scam artists used to defraud the government out of over $2 million during the pandemic. The scam started in June of 2020 and continued over into May of 2021. They stemmed from the government's efforts to help businesses and individuals during the economic shutdown caused by the mandate. This is why I tell folks check the ATMs in the whole nine <laughs> before you go putting your card anywhere. If you're going to do it, get a debit card. But if you're going to use your credit card for something, use it in like when you're really like paying for stuff, though. Like, it's crazy, yo. The shelter in place orders were enforced all around the world, leading to many businesses having their revenue streams completely cut off. Anticipating payroll orders, the government started a program that would provide money for companies to fund their payroll and in turn pay their employees. Still, many companies had to lay off employees, which led to a temporary time in employment. To combat the issue, the government created assistance programs to help people get money from employees of unemployment. The assistance was necessary because many companies during this period, in 2020 and 2021, had stopped hiring new employees. Of course, that didn't stop millions. Millions of financial criminals from exploiting the program, including the scam artists mentioned earlier. In this case, the young men were able to obtain the unemployment benefits much more easily. And then y'all taking pictures, yo. Like, what is wrong with you? to hand out as much assistance as possible to as many unemployed people as possible. It's so, the benefit up. requirements were much lower. The eight suspects included 18-year-old Brian Adams, 19-year-old Gianna Stewart, 20-year-old Carlos Vasquez, 25-year-old Andre Ruff, 18-year-old Angel Cabrera, and 18-year-old Seth Ford. Yes, most of the suspects in this crime were barely even legal out. But their young age didn't stop them from pulling off relatively complex financial crimes. The eight began their scheme by stealing personal information from various unemployed individuals and used this information to create the aforementioned 100 debit cards. The debit cards were then used to withdraw money from various ATM machines in and around where they live in New York, including the Flatlands and a couple spots in Eastern Queens. The suspects might have gotten away with the scam like so many others have, but they decided their newfound wealth was just too good to not post on their social media pages. They posted photos of themselves holding fat stacks of cash inside expensive sports cars, and then stacking more cash on top of the expensive sports cars, all of which were way beyond the wages they earned from their job. Suddenly, the eight young men had two million dollars worth of luxury items in cash. Authorities, who were searching for those responsible for the eight young men, found the social media posts published online on the eight young men. After some more digging into the eight young men, investigators eventually found more evidence that suggested they had fraudulently obtained their money through a mass debit card scheme, including surveillance footage of one of the suspects, Armand Miller, but Drawing money from the capital of each nation, they soon compiled other pieces of evidence enough to arrest the eight scam artists and charge them with several fraud-related charges. Who were some of the? And then y'all, they got cameras on the eight. The dumbest criminals out there who were just begging to get caught. Olsi oh Bahalu posted the money he made from Dim on Twitter. And Lorraine Graves actually commented on her own most wanted Facebook post made by police. <laughs> Let's get right into it. I think I'm gonna just do that. Yeah, I'm a hold up. Number four, Mars. Yeah, I'm gonna just do this one, y'all. I ain't gonna do that second one. But yo, see, I gotta say it. Attention is way more valuable than money nowadays. Getting them likes is way more valuable now. People don't care anymore. If it don't get you likes, who cares? You post all the stuff that you're doing on social media and then be out here. When you get caught, they be out here. Oh, they out here telling on each other. You told on yourself. You told on yourself. You steal that much money and thinking that they're not going to look into it. You really believe that. Oh. Maybe that's why a lot of criminals got away with their stuff that they did back then because it wasn't, a lot of this wasn't out. But now... I see why the conviction rate is like 97, 98% now. Because y'all telling on y'all self. 
y'all y'all posting it on social media social media is helping get the help is catching y'all now boy i'll tell you the truth man and then they got cameras everywhere if it ain't in the stores it's on everybody's house it's on the street lights now they are everywhere They ain't gonna be able to miss you. Boy. But yo. <laughs> oh man. This video make me sleepy, man. It just like I feel like I lost chromosomes looking at this looking at some of this shit. But yo, y'all gotta be careful using y'all cards outside, man. Getting getting it out the ATM. Look around before you do so. If something don't seem right, go with your first fucking feeling. I, I even caught my mother doing that. I'm like, my, you ain't see what's going on in this. She like, no. I told her what was going on. She ain't go back to that store to get no money out of her account. I even told my father, they're doing it everywhere. Y'all got to be careful. Don't be on your cell phone trying to get money out either. Make sure you're paying attention to your surroundings. And if you got a chance to lock your card, do it. They got apps now. You can lock them. <laughs> Just be careful, man. Just be careful out here, man. Real talk. Um, Other than that, man... <laughs> Uh, I ain't really got nothing else to say. Cause I mean, even if like you can, you ain't got to do it and post it. There's somebody that's going to say something. And then you stealing money from a school. People trying to learn. And you out on vacation, lady. Yo, if y'all like this video, smash the like button for your boy. Comment down below, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for your boy, man. Peace, love, blessings. We out this piece, y'all.